Hi, we're the Mind Body Couple. I'm Tanner Murtaugh. And I'm Ann Hampson. And this podcast is dedicated to helping you unlearn neuroplastic pain and mind body concerns. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome to our podcast. Today, our topic is the dorsal vagal system and chronic pain and symptoms. Yes. Okay. So remind everyone, what is the dorsal vagal system? How can they recognize it? Mm -hmm. So the dorsal vagal system is one of the three systems of your autonomic nervous system. So this really comes from like polyvagal theory. Mm Mm-hmm. So the other systems, we'll we'll start there really quick, is ventral vagal. Right. So you feel safe, calm, connected, socially engaged. The happiest system. Mm -hmm. It's how Anne feels when she looks at me. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) That was like the most corny kind of joke ever, Tanner. That's That's how I think Anne feels when she looks at me, at least. It's not. Well, sometimes, maybe. (laughs) Mm, Rarely. Oh, hurtful. But you get it, ventral vagal system. The sympathetic system, it's when you're mobilized. And if you go far enough into the sympathetic system, you get that fight or flight response taking place. Now, the sympathetic system is also very associated with chronic pain and symptoms. And I think, to be honest, it's talked about more. Right. I think most a lot of people can recognize this as a system they spend most of their time in. Mm -hmm. But the dorsal vagal system... What's happened here is your your nervous system is picking up on signals of extreme danger. Mm-hmm. There doesn't actually, I want to be clear about this, there doesn't actually need to be actual danger, but it's just picking up on cues or signals of extreme danger. Right. And for a lot of people with trauma, which we know is very highly associated with chronic pain and symptoms, they can sink to this dorsal vagal place. Mm-hmm. So the dorsal vagal system, it's when we basically become immobilized, but with fear. So we can dissociate, we clap, shut down. There can be a feeling of like despair or depression that's involved in this. Yes. And I think we've often talked about depression as living in the dorsal system. Mm -hmm. It's very much part of it. We feel alone. There can be like a lack of motivation, Mm -hmm. I find, for a lot of people. Yep. Things like disconnection. We feel very disconnected from the outside world when we're in this dorsal place. One thing I'm wondering about, Tanner, is why might somebody go to, like, get stuck in sympathetic versus get stuck in dorsal? Yeah, and it's a good question. The difficult thing is there's no real way to answer that Mm. because we don't... When they the way they talk about the somatic experience, you know, I really like. Yeah, where it's explained that we don't control our autonomic nervous system, like we don't. We can do our best to send signals of safety mm-hmm. to it to kind of regulate ourselves, but we don't control, and we don't control how our nervous system chooses to best keep us alive, right? To help us survive, and so. Again, for a lot of people, when they've extreme like faced like extreme trauma or childhood adversity, we can shut down because that's a place that we go to. But there's other people that stay more in that fight or flight zone, right? And really, what determines it is if a survival response like shutting down was useful for you in the past, and it helps you make make it through a really difficult time. Your nervous system is gonna really value that response yeah because now it's been coded as something that's really helpful right like it remembers it's Mm -hmm. like oh okay i'm going to do this again yeah and if we have unprocessed trauma and we lived in dorsal in the past it just keeps favoring it Mm. so our nervous system goes there like we the cycle of activation people go into is just automatically dropping down and just shut down. Well, I think that makes sense. And a lot of people talk to me about how they feel like they're operating in these ways that they don't have control over, or they keep kind of going in into these systems and going into sa- these same patterns, um, whereas they don't want to be, or they have all this knowledge otherwise, but they can't stop that. Yeah. 
And you think about it, you know, your autonomic nervous system, when it's picking up on those extreme cues of danger, one of the ways that lets us know that is with chronic pain and symptoms. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important for people to understand. If you leave this, you know, podcast with anything, just know that that is like a common symptom when we're in dorsal. Yes. It's how our nervous system is letting us know, hey, something's not right here. So for a lot of people, this can be chronic pain. I find like fibromyalgia really can live there. Mm -hmm. Things like chronic fatigue or mm -hmm. other chronic symptoms. So it, there's just such a correlation between the two. So if people are in that depressed, dissociative, dorsal place, it just leads us into developing chronic pain and symptoms. Now, it's not going to happen every time you just drop down there. Even going to dorsal periodically, that's okay. Mm -hmm. If we can shift back out, that's fine. Yeah. But it's this prolonged activation of that state. Well, that's it. And I think we've talked about the states in the past or in other podcasts that all the states are perfectly normal and I'm part of our experience and our nervous system. It's about not getting stuck somewhere or, or looking at what happens when we do. Yes, that's exactly it. Because people, people confuse, and we've talked about it many times, but people confuse this a lot of what like a regulated nervous system means. Right. And that does not mean you're just calm and collected and at ease all the time. Like, we're human beings. Mm -hmm. We're not meant to function like that. No. And we can kind of, like, aim for that in some ways. Or we can have goals or we can try to – but we need to have some acceptance that that's not always reality. Yeah. Um, and then understanding what state we're in and how to take care of that state. Yeah. I'll give you a great example. Me and Amber just talking about this. Okay. This happened right before. Oh, this this really and does throw this, Tanner. <laughs> and this happened. Oh, it's so frustrating. Mm. And I'm looking at the culprit right now across the room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll explain that in a second. But before this, I was recording because we record our podcast on Fridays. And I also do my YouTube videos mm -hmm. on Fridays. That's like my recording day. It's yeah. all in one day. So I'm recording in, in our basement offices renovated almost done it's getting there it doesn't feel there yet oh uh, yeah. don't sorry Come on. <laughs> i'm it sorry looks, looks better than it did uh, yeah put a nice carpet anyways <laughs> okay you just completely went <laughs> you know, on a tangent so the scenery in the youtube video is a little bit different so i put this salt rock mm -hmm. behind I, I feel like we have a bad relationship with those salt rocks but anyways yeah i put the salt <laughs> rock behind me while i'm recording the video and then i you know, it takes a while, like, even though it's like a 10 minute video, it takes, takes about an hour of like setting up, mm -hmm. like recording it, testing your audio. It's all, it's a whole thing. And so I'm like watching the video back and the light is like flickering <laughs> intensely. <laughs> and it doesn't flicker when you look at it, but it must be the way the camera yes. picks it up. And so when I saw that, I sunk. I was like, oh, this is awful. Like, I give up. Now, I'm not saying I went like deep into dorsal, mm. but there was a feeling of that. And naturally, as time passed, maybe half an hour or so, mm -hmm. I started to pull out. Okay, so that would be an example of shifting states kind of yeah. naturally for you. Yeah, and it wasn't maybe a full dorsal, but there was an element of dorsal, maybe with some sympathetic going on. Mm -hmm. But I was able to flexibly shift back out. What allowed you to do that, Tanner? If we're talking about, because one thing that kind of resonated with me as you were talking is not having control over our, our automatic nervous system. And so when that happened to you, was it like, oh, I'll just go with the flow? Or was there something you were able to do? Yeah. And that's the difficult part is there's things that you can do in the moment. And I'm mm -hmm. going to, we're going to explain a bit of a process here. Yeah. But it's also, it's like a cumulative effort. Mm -hmm. So like it's all building. Yes. So even today, earlier in the day, I had to do some paperwork and different things. But I really was leaning into being calm, at ease, like relaxed. I was kind of flowing through my day, hung out with the cats. Oh, good. Yeah. The cats were hanging out. Um, so there, and that's just one day, but it all builds. Mm -hmm. And so my ability to shift out of feeling dysregulated for a moment was built not in that moment, but it was built based off months of work, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So that all added up. Now, after the video, 
I, you know, the old me would have like frantically tried to record the new one before he got home to do this podcast. Right. But I was like, I'm not doing that. So I went outside. I kind of hung out. I walked around a bit. Like I mm. naturally am sending signals of safety to my system. Well, and it's interesting because I talked with a lot of people about like, like, let's tend to our nervous system. And so, and it sounds like that you, that's what you're doing. You weren't trying to push through. You weren't frantic about it or even fighting it. So there's this error of kind of acceptance, but yeah. you're also soothing yourself as well. Yeah. And being like out in the sun, mm -hmm. still a little chilly out, but right. out in the sun, it, it calms me. It yeah. relaxes me. And I also attended to feeling sad about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, that sucks. I have to redo this thing. And I know this sounds like a really small example, mm -hmm. but it's something that in the past, like, you know, a couple of years ago, it would have just ruined my day. Mm -hmm. Like the whole day. <laughs> well, and you would have gotten stuck in that the whole day. And I can vouch for that. that that's very true. Yeah. Um, and he would have gotten stuck in dorsal. So say years ago, what, what did that look like for you in terms of your body and your experience and your thinking of being stuck? Yeah, well, I think I, I would have just spiraled mm -hmm. in self-criticism. Mm, yeah. Why did I put that salt rock there? <laughs> well, right. I, you might have yeah. smashed the I salt rock. I wouldn't have smashed <laughs> oh, the salt rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, you never know, but probably not. It's a, uh, it's a nice rock. I'm, uh, uh, you know, okay. I'm not well, going to put it in my videos anymore, but it's a nice rock. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there would have been a spiraling and there would have been this like frustrated, sympathetic, high fight or flight for a long period. And then yes. I would just shut down. Okay. So like, that's my pattern for me is like, I'll go in this high fight or flight and sometimes mm -hmm. I can stay there for weeks mm -hmm. and then I just drop because it's just too much. And so your amount of work that you're working on, mm -hmm. is that kind of staying Again, accepting the different states, but also staying a bit at baseline or coming down to baseline instead of being up here and sympathetic or crashing into dorsal. Yeah, and it's just, it's a cumulative effort. But, you know, today we're going to talk about, you know, attending to the experience of dorsal vagal mm. because we can't ignore it. Either. Yes. Yeah. We don't, I want to be clear here, a little disclaimer, don't nosedive into attending to the dorsal vagal energy inside if it's too intense. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you're new to this, like it can feel very overwhelming. For myself, over time, I've been able to attend to more activation of my system and actually still feel safe. Mm -hmm. But you have to start where you're at. Yes, and I think you've created that safety because it's been over time and you've been kind of creating these corrective experiences as you go. Mm -hmm. And so what does that look like then? Well, I have it all written out all for right. you right here. We're calling this, you know, at our clinic, this this technique. We call it the somatic embodiment practice. Mm -hmm. Now, this isn't something that you could just do for dorsal. Mm -hmm. This could be really for any sensations in your body. Okay. Uh, it's just a bit of a process to starting to attend to any kind of dysregulated energy. And so at first, right off the bat, it's noticing and naming what you're experiencing. Yes. And you could notice a name, as Deb Dana says, and that's kind of her technique mm -hmm. of where you're at in your nervous system. Mm -hmm. Like notice mm -hmm. what's going on, name what state you're in. Mm -hmm. But you can go a little further. Like you can really describe how am I experiencing that? Mm -hmm. So after the salt rock mm -hmm. fiasco, mm -hmm. as we're calling it, I love how we didn't actually plan this. I love how that's become the no. example here. <laughs> I, and we're staring at it right now. I know it's staring back at me. I don't yeah. like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when that happened, I felt a drop in energy. Okay. As soon as, and it wasn't massive, mm -hmm. but I did feel a drop of kind of like this hopeless, like, oh, that's so painful that that happened. And I felt heaviness and I felt the sensations of sadness going yeah. on in my body. I always tell people it's when you're noticing and naming, like just describing them a bit. Mm -hmm. Like what shape, size, color, yes. texture they are. Well, and that brings that curious relationship with it. Exactly. And that's the starting place. And sometimes that's as far as you can get. Okay. Like if it's feeling too overwhelming, mm -hmm. it's just shifting to something else. And so and I think that it's really great that you say that, Tanner, because we don't have to spend loads of time doing this mm -hmm. if if we're not comfortable again we want whatever we do to feel somewhat safe and corrective yes but if you want to 
you know, increase this a bit more. Mm. It's just kind of exploring and tracking it for a bit. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this a lot, like Alan Gordon, somatic tracking, right? Like mm -hmm. you're, you're tracking the sensation, like you're noticing as you watch it over time and sit with it, like what takes place yeah. as you're kind of exploring it. I always tell people it's almost like you're approaching it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Like, can you move your mind a little bit closer to where you're feeling that? Ah, uh, okay. So a little bit more exposure, a little bit more time. Exactly. And you want to start on the edges. I always tell people, like, it's almost imagining, like, where's the edge of the sensation in your body? Mm -hmm. And you're just working in just a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. And I think with emotions, especially kind of connected to dorsal, um, we don't want to feel it. Or when we do feel it, it's not in this curiosity, it's not in this exploration type state. So this is very different. Yes. It's a very different kind of approach that mm -hmm. we're taking to it. And you hit a good point. Like we want to be curious. Mm -hmm. We want that attitude of lightness as we focus on something that might be heavy. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds odd, but that is a possibility. Like we are, we can learn to do that. So back to your experience with the salt rock, what was that like for you when you took that approach? Yeah, I think at the end of it all, and again, it wasn't a very intense experience. Mm -hmm. um, frustrating, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. <laughs> but it was one of those things where I've gotten really good over time, at least just sitting with it. Mm -hmm. Because I know me going through the rest of my day trying to avoid that I'm actually frustrated about this thing and sad about it, it's not going to go well. <laughs> yeah, It's going to cause me to be more dysregulated. Our whole house to be dysregulated. Yeah. And it's important for me to at least sit with those sensations. Did that allow you then to, when it was time or appropriate, redirect? Yes. Yeah, it gave me more space. And we're going to get to that in the mm -hmm, process. I'm sorry. You're yeah. skipping ahead. I am sorry. <laughs> you know I this like process. People, others might be questioning that I too know, at I this know. point, Tanner. It's a fair question. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, next point. Mm -hmm. And again, some of the stuff that we're explaining in this somatic embodiment practice, it's not necessarily in a set order. Yes. Like, all these are just factors that you can include in this practice. Mm -hmm. You can mix them up. Feel free to jumble mm -hmm. them. Um, but we, you know, what I call it is making sure as you're kind of exploring and tracking that you're staying in the healing window. Mm, I like that. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a really nice way to think of like, am, is this the healing window? Am I kind of completely offside? Yeah. 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 There's a lot of terms out here for what we mean by this. And you'll mm -hmm. recognize some of them like the process, mm -hmm. Alan Gordon, mm -hmm. titration by uh, Peter Levine. Yeah. All right. So there's, there's a lot of terms. I, I just call it the healing window because it's just any sensations. Like the healing window isn't like when you're just calm, it's, it's attending to a sensation that's uncomfortable, it's unpleasant, mm -hmm. but it's not so unpleasant that you're flying into fight, fright, freeze, shut down. Yes, and that should be the warning sign of, okay, I yeah. need to stop or I need to do this some other time. Yeah, like if the dysregulation is increasing rapidly or any sensation is increasing mm -hmm. rapidly, that's a sign that you're outside of that healing window. Yeah. And so you just got to honor that. Even if it's like a 1 out of 10 in terms of intensity of that dorsal vagal system, that's where you're at. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Start there. Like find moments that you can attend to it when it's just a little bit there. Yes. But that healing win window is really important to honor. Now, the next step that I kind of mentioned, it leads into the following one mm. is shifting. Yeah. Because if you notice that you're outside of the healing window, you don't necessarily have to stop completely, but you got to shift. Mm. You gotta, you gotta shift to something else that feels more calm. And, you know, I call them a lot of the times like safety signals. Yes. Like shifting a figure, you know, the, the intensity is getting too much. You wanna shift to a safety signal. Mm -hmm. And the safety signal is really anything that cultivates feelings of safety, calmness, connection yeah. in your nervous system. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's important to explore those yeah. um, of what works for you because yours might be very different than Tanner's or mine. Exactly. And so, you know, one that I used with the salt rock was just going outside. Mm -hmm. Like being in sun naturally like calms me. It makes me yeah. feel a bit more pleasant. And that was just a natural thing and that I did. 
when I was feeling that sadness and frustration and feeling a bit low. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean you were avoiding yeah. the sensation, but you allowed yourself to kind of shift too. Mm -hmm. You know, one of your favorites, Anne, mm -hmm. you're holding one right now. Tea, warm tea. Yes. It's warm just, tea. it's almost like this cue of comfort for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is what I've been doing this whole yeah. podcast. <laughs> she has been grasping it, but Anne knows she's not allowed to say it. <laughs> it's because I'm not allowed to drink it because it, you guys could hear it. It's hilarious because I'm sitting to. here like mm -hmm. holding her tea <laughs> with both her hands, like very, like it's like upright, you know, but she's not allowed to drink it. Cause here, can we just test it? Okay, you can have yeah, one sip. Because Tanner thinks it'll be really loud. So let's see. I don't think anyone heard that. Yeah. But you, you, you know, when we don't set it up, though, you slurp a little bit oh, more intensely okay. when you're drinking your tea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but not... it could be something that simple yeah. that can give us comfort, yeah. um, cues of safety. Um, and again, it's not ignoring maybe the dorsal sensation or whatever that no. might be. But it's shifting to something like that. Yeah. And one thing that you're talking about, because it, it's almost like the sense of touch mm -hmm. that you're feeling. Yeah. A really important thing with dorsal is like using like present moment sensing. Mm. Right? Like touch, mm -hmm. taste, uh, okay. smell, yes. sight, sound. Why is that so helpful, Tanner? Because what happens in dorsal is you just, you're sucked out of the here and now. Mm -hmm. And so... Yes. You know, being able to kind of reorient with your surroundings yeah. is vital. And so a lot of times if it's shifting, it could just be closing your eyes. But this is one that works really well for me, closing my eyes and listening to sounds. Ah. Because when I get overwhelmed, I find sight really, it, uh -huh. it overwhelms me more. And so if I can close my eyes and just listen to the sounds around me or lack of sounds for like two, three minutes, mm -hmm. my whole system starts to calm. Well, and it's interesting because I think there's that mindfulness kind of experience of mm -hmm. five, four, three, two, one, which is noticing different senses, yeah. um, which a lot of people know. And if you don't know it, if you literally research five, four, three, two, one mindfulness yeah. exercise online, <laughs> it, it will pop up. pop up. But what it's about is noticing and putting your focus in the present of different kind of different sensations through hearing, feeling, touch. Yeah. But it's figuring out what works for you. So for me, I'm quite bothered by noises. So kind of tuning into sounds might not be helpful for me, but touch is. Yeah, it's interesting. We have opposite ones. Touch works really well for me too sometimes, mm. but sound definitely doesn't work for you. <laughs> no, well, some, it depends. It depends. It can't yeah. be repetitive, like anything. No, so it's figuring out, okay, what is calming and what is not. <laughs> yeah, and it may not be what you like cognitively think. Yeah. Like when I was first doing this work, I always imagined, and maybe I've mentioned this on the podcast, that if I was out in nature looking mm. at beautiful things that I would naturally calm, mm -hmm. but I find it very overwhelming. Like sight, I find uh, very overwhelming to me. So it doesn't make cognitive sense, no. but like to my nervous system, that just doesn't work. Yes, and feeling that out interesting for me for sound, the only sound is when I'm at the barn and I close my eyes and I listen to the sounds of the barn. Uh, it's the barn sounds. Yeah, the barn sounds. <laughs> <laughs> but other sounds very much stress me out. Yeah. yeah. So it's really figuring out, okay, what creates yeah. this for me and exploring that. Yes, and another important, there's so many safety signals, we're mm. not going to mention them all, but another important safety signal, especially with dorsal, mm -hmm. is some type of movement. Well, uh, yes. Because with dorsal, we, when we're shut down, like everything locks up. We yeah. just completely go inward, and we need to slowly start, and I want to be clear about this, slowly, like don't go excessively work out like it's going to be too overwhelming to your systems probably, mm -hmm. but starting to use movement can help us shift out of it. Yes. And it's a signal of safety. Deb Dana talks about how movement's essential for life, and it is for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. Like our nervous system needs that. Yeah. And so a lot of times, even when I'm working with people, I might pull like certain moves, like small moves from Qigong mm -hmm. to support a little bit of lifting out of that state. One thing I've been wondering, Tanner, so say 
you know, say someone that's listening is struggling with that, like, depressed dorsal shutdown, sometimes, like, it can be like, where do I start? That can feel overwhelming because your salt rock example is very small. What if someone's yeah. struggling in a very big way with dorsal? Yeah, and that's where you would want to try and attend to it when it's a little bit more mild mm. at first. Like, you wouldn't want to pick the most activating times. Yes. Or you want to pick times where maybe you start with sending signals of safety. Yeah. Like maybe, because like we said, none of this is in order. Like maybe you start there and do that for 10 minutes. Yeah. And then you shift to a place in your body where you feel more of the dorsal vagal. I like that. And I think that's a really interesting approach. Yeah. Messages of safety is often a starting place that I see people feel comfortable around. Yeah. Yeah, so these are just things. So you just got to think, like, if you're outside of the healing window, mm -hmm. even if it's at the beginning of the practice, shift to some type of safety signal. Mm -hmm. Now, once you do that, you can practice shifting back and forth. Mm -hmm. That's a, a beautiful practice to, to get used to. It's just the shifting back and forth between the two. Yes, and, and that's somewhere where I, I, would, I don't want to say we have control, but where we can feel empowered a little bit in terms of having this understanding that it is possible to shift. Yes. And the last thing I want to mention in this process, this is kind of, of an overarching thing around all of it, is self-compassion. Mm -hmm. We did a podcast, it was probably three or four episodes ago, yeah. on self-compassion. But you need that. Like if we go into this process with such a level of criticism, mm -hmm. it's really hard to ever feel safe with the sensations. Yes. So especially with dorsal, self-compassion can go a long way. Yeah. And so it's just trying to have that awareness of how am I talking to myself? Is there that compassion? Um, and how do I reframe if I need to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think if anyone's kind of struggling with this process... Mm -hmm. Connecting with a therapist can be really essential. Yeah, for sure. Right? Um, like our clinic, like we are a bit limited in the sense that we're only able to work in certain provinces in Canada. Yeah. But working with someone, another therapist who knows something about a mind-body approach, has more of a somatic lens, because that's what yeah. we're kind of explaining, can go a long way. For sure. So we want to thank you all for listening to this episode. And we will talk to you all next week. Talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. If you want to book in a session with one of our therapists, you can go to our website at painpsychotherapy.ca. You can also follow us on Instagram at painpsychotherapy, where me and Anne are posting content daily and are there to respond to your comments. Also, check out our YouTube channel, which is named Tanner Murtaugh MSW RSW.